Hello everyone, welcome to your lecture on gender sensitization, issues and challenges. This lecture is a part of your paper on gender, media and society. This lecture will highlight the meaning and importance of gender sensitization. It will also discuss the need for gender sensitization in the context of family, education and workplaces for a meaningful life. Defining gender sensitization. One of the major lacuna in our social organization is the prevalence of gender based discrimination in different walks of life, be it social, economic or political. Gender discrimination refers to biased treatment of women or girls as well as men and boys, which in turn is a consequence of deep-rooted normative beliefs about usual traits, behaviors and roles of women and men. Such beliefs are learned since childhood and passed down through generations such that people come to recognize these as given and obvious facets of gender identities. For instance, the fact that women have typically performed the task of rearing children have resulted in the stereotype that women are by nature nurturing and caring and hence the only appropriate role for them is care work. In similar manner, people tend to develop inflexible ideas about what is feminine and what is masculine. Eventually, such stereotypes get implicated in all forms of social institutions and organizations like family, community and state. Indeed, such stereotypes can be observed anywhere, educational institutions, workplaces, religious institutions, sports and cultural events. Need for gender sensitization a major concern in the context of gender stereotypes are that these often operate in a subtle manner because these are considered as obvious truths to the extent that it becomes extremely difficult if not impossible to even reckon and decode these stereotypes. Most often, these are practiced unconsciously and unknowingly. For example, unequal wages given to women for doing equal and similar work as done by men is a common practice in labor markets the world over. Often, such unequal wages are justified on the grounds that women lack the requisite skill they prioritize family work over career. They are suited for soft jobs compared to men. Their earnings are secondary source of income for the household, so on and so forth. Such stereotypes are underlain by the assumption that women are homemakers and men are the breadwinners for the family which actually place women in a secondary position in the labor market. Although women are mostly victims, individuals of any gender stand disadvantaged in the face of such overwhelming stereotypes. In order to address these stereotypes, one needs to be gender sensitive, which basically means being informed about the gender equality concerns and act accordingly. To this end, gender sensitization is an important tool which help in raising awareness about such 
stereotypes and inequalities and cultivate a disposition to behave in a gender sensitive manner. Thus, sensitization of gender is about changing behavior and instilling empathy into the views that we hold about our own and the other genders. It assists people in analyzing their personal point of view and opinions and questioning the actualities they believed they know. Needless to mention that gender sensitization is an imperative not only for the development of sensitive individuals but also of a society that is devoid of sexist biases. It is however important to mention here that gender sensitivity does not pit women against men. Rather, it inculcates an open-mindedness which allows an individual to unpack the unseen nuances of gender constructions, determine the validity of such generalized constructions and widens the horizon of life choices for both women and men. Importance of Gender Sensitization By enabling us to decipher the gender stereotypes that are subtly entwined into all forms of social organizations, gender sensitization helps us to critically view what is otherwise considered as natural and obvious, thus leading to the pathway towards development of informed individuals. It helps to generate respect for all individuals irrespective of sex. It enables us to see human rights as intrinsic to the attainment of gender justice and appreciate the worth of the women and other genders as human beings. It helps to address the hurdles that thwart any attempt to reduce gender gaps in family, community, education, employment and all other spheres of life. Gender sensitization enables people to critically review their personal beliefs and opinions they have been socialized into. That said, it is important to flag few gender issues which one should be conscious about for being an informed and gender sensitive individual. These are as follows. Sex and gender, gender ideals and stereotypes, gender roles, role of family, a progressive society must be built on the edifice of social justice, gender being an important parameter. This basically means that there must not be any denial of equality, opportunity and rights on the basis of gender. Family being the primary unit of social organization, any effort to inculcate gender sensitivity must begin here. In the third world countries in general and India in particular, gender discrimination within the families is rampant and is manifested through sun preferences, denying the girls of the right to proper food, nutrition, education and health, unequal access to economic resources based on gender and inflexible gender roles whereby men are seen as the primary breadwinners and women as mothers, homemakers and caregivers. Such forms of discrimination operate at different scales and at different levels across the societies the world over. The socialization process of children begin from their families first and the gender ideals and messages they pick up from their immediate surrounding environment contribute towards shaping their persona and approach towards gender ideologies. Girls or women 
come to accept their position as inferior to that of the boys or men while the latter being considering themselves as superior to the former. The persuasion experienced at home along with the previously existing social disparity between men and women lead to re-entrenchment of patriarchal ideologies in the society. Several studies on violence point out that children who had experienced gender-based violence being committed in the home in their childhoods are more likely to consider violence against women as normal. Thus, men absorb to use brutality and women learn to tolerate it. Intimate companion violence therefore is learned social behavior. Hence, the familial context is the most important site for gender sensitization for the children learn whatever is practiced at home. Gender sensitivity in education. Gender stereotypes are mostly learned through socialization processes and perpetrated by the education received since childhood. Schools, colleges and institutions of higher education play important role in reproducing the gender stereotypes which boys and girls have already imbibed from their familial environment. The learning materials, textbooks, etc. often underscore subtle biases in favor of asymmetric gender roles and characteristics. Often in most disciplines, knowledge is produced by man and sometimes for male readers. Male writers tend to select examples from their everyday experiences. The illustrations, examples, case studies, presentation of role models, etc. used to substantiate the study content are frequently rooted in cultural stereotypes of gender. As discussed earlier, the content of curriculum and the manner in which it is produced is of extreme relevance in this context. Several studies analyzing the content of school textbooks point out that gender stereotypes are perpetuated by the portrayal of women in school books as only low status workers, mothers and wives which do not reflect the contemporary social realities. The nurses and teachers in the textbooks are consistently depicted as women while drivers, carpenters, postmen, doctors, farmers, pilots, soldiers etc. are shown as men. These textbooks thus reinforce the stereotypical notion that men have much wider access to public sphere while women's access is limited and is merely a reflection of their caregiving roles. Also, it has been highlighted that the language in which the contents are written sometimes does not cater to the call for gender inclusivity. In fact, such language frequently hinges on perpetuating gender stereotypes. Some eco-feminists while exploring the symbolic association between women and nature which is rampantly visible in art, literature, religion etc. observe that there are subtle linguistic connections between the two. In fact, many literary critics claim that patrilineal concepts of women and nature warrant a two-pronged rape and domination of the earth and the women who live on it. Some ecofeminists have highlighted the characteristic connections between naturist and sexist articulation that is language that inferiorizes women and non-human disposition by accustoming women and feminizing nature. For instance, there are anxieties about if sex-gendered speech 
used to narrate mother nature is potentially liberating or simply a rationale for the continued subordination of women. The claim is that language that so feminizes nature and naturalizes women describes, reflects and perpetuates the domination and inferiorization of both. It has been argued that the education curricula must be extricated from all forms of sexist biases. The school curriculum should include lessons on psychological and physiological changes of adolescence such that the boys and girls become aware of their bodies. They should also be educated about the difference between sex as biological and gender as social construct. Education must enable them to understand the various facets of gender discrimination in our societies. Question the stereotypical construction of masculinity as well as femininity and refrain from engaging in any form of sexual conquests. Fortunately, many business publishers now include instruction writings on gender sensitive lines into their common guidelines for authors. In some countries, guidelines for producing gender sensitive learning materials have also been issued by concerned public bodies. The South African Institute for Distance Education issued certain instructions which is to be applied while creating anti-sexist teaching materials. Firstly, three important points were considered language, content and use and layout of graphics and pictures, endorsing powerful role models so that women, specifically black working class women, can relate positively. Women should be highlighted as the able decision makers involving in the important matters that hampers their lives. The instructions also stated upon the use of language that should not degrade or totally ignore women such as words like chick, mankind etc. and the matter to be presented in a manner as to increase women's self-image particularly the black women. It also emphasized upon the material which should not extend the sexist traditions that have been evolved about women like women love to nag or they cannot think clearly for being too emotional etc. And highlight that the looks should not be the most significant characteristic of women in stories or fairy tales. It highlights that the efforts given by women in order to secure their personal freedom should not be termed as hostile, unfeminine conduct instead be accepted as sound and lawful struggles and presentation should be done in a way that ends destructive feelings of supremacy on the basis of patrilineal values in a man. It stressed upon women's role in a developing society and their influence on history must be sufficiently presented from the perspective of women and the illustrations used must issue non-stereotypes and depict women in authoritative and active roles. The guidelines also focus that the material is free of terms considering offending and humiliating by women themselves and the authors or editors should develop an apprehension and responsiveness to gender. Steps taken by the Government of India The Ministry of Human Resource and Development has recommended the governments of the state to advocate gender sensitization. To this end, some of the steps suggested include re-examination of textbooks and curricula in the light of gender sensitivity, 
conducting a minimum of two to three days of gender module where all the teachers shall be present at the training programs of yearly in service adding of an account of gender sensitive criterions to advance gender sensitivity in classroom as well as co-curricular activities self-defense training for girls in physical education classes from upper primary onwards. Major revisions are underway in the curricula of all levels and both. For example, the present physical and health education syllabus for 1 to 10 classes refined by NCERT based on NCF 2005 contains chapters related to human anatomy safety and security, protecting others, health and society and self-defense. Introduction of gender studies and value-based education has also been proposed under the school syllabus. The CBSC is also undergoing for the introduction of modules based on gender sensitization to equip teacher and assist students accord with stereotyping concerning women from an early age. Program of master trainer for analyzed and stimulated nodal teachers and stimulated counselors, gender sensitive trainers or teachers, copy and students activity cards from classes 1 to class 12. Apart from this, a task force was also constituted by UGC in 2013 January to analyze the standards for confirming women's safety on varsity campuses and programs on the topic of gender sensitization. Courses on women's studies have also been mandated in all universities and colleges across the country with the assumption that such courses would help in instilling gender sensitivity among the young minds through regular academic programs, workshops and discussions and other such activities. The NCERT also has a Department of Gender Studies under its wing which works towards addressing power relations and gender inclusivity in the Indian society and also advises the center and the states in executing policies and programs in the area of gender studies. Earlier, this department was named as the Department of Women's Studies and was renamed as the Department of Gender Studies after the landmark judgment of the Supreme Court of India in 2014, which ruled for treating transgender as third gender. Gender sensitization in workplace. Economic liberalization has opened up different kinds of employment opportunities, not only for men, but also for women in both blue and white collar jobs. According to Census of India 2011, Women account for only 25.6% of the total workers. Increasing participation of women in paid labor force necessitates the creation of an enabling working environment imbued with gender sensitive work culture. It must be remembered that both men and women enter their workplaces carrying the baggage of stereotypes pertaining to appropriate gender roles implanted in them by their families and perpetuated by the education system. A man's place is in the workplace or public sphere and a woman's place is in the home or private sphere. Such stereotype eventually renders women as secondary workers in the labor market the last to be hired but the first to be dispensed away with in the face of austerity measures and layoffs. Several studies have pointed out that even in the modern technology driven information and communication technology sectors which employ professionally trained high skilled women 
Subtle biases operate in matters of appraisals, promotions, etc., whereby women's contributions, however significant, is rendered as inconsequential based on the assumption that women prioritize families over career. Thus, gender sensitization in the workplace has emerged as a key imperative. Employees need to understand and be sensitive to the needs and concerns of their colleagues, including women. This would help to develop good interpersonal relationships among colleagues and facilitate a productive work environment loaded down with shared respect and assurance among the sexes, devoid of sexual allusions and chauvinist biases. Official statistics indicate that increased participation of women in public sphere is accompanied by an increase in crimes committed against women, especially rape, in all the major Indian cities. In such cases, the moral integrity of the victim is often questioned by politicians, religious and social leaders, etc. They argue that a woman who does not stay within her limits in terms of dress, code of conduct or special location, appropriate time, etc. crosses the Lakshman Rekha is ought to be punished. Intricately associated with such a mindset is the notion of shame and honor which has been operationalized as a moral sanction by the patriarchal society to limit women's mobility and life choices. Thus, notions of ideal femininity and respectability are constructed as a way to control and confine women. However, given the altered everyday realities of the present times, where women no longer remain confined to the four walls of the home and shoulder the financial responsibilities at par, with their male counterparts by engaging in paid work, be it in white collar high end service sectors or in the blue collar informal work, addressing such patriarchal mindset becomes a matter of utmost priority. Fortunately, some positive steps have been initiated by the government of India in this direction. In its landmark judgment in 1997, with respect to the case of Vishakha versus State of Rajasthan, it was acknowledged by the Supreme Court for the first time that sexual molestation against women is a violation of human rights and mandated that employers must provide for affectionate and non-avenging mechanisms to dictate the gender equality right for women in workplaces. As per the Vishakha guidelines, Sexual violence and harassment in the workplace is criminally culpable. Another major breakthrough in this regard came in 2012 with the setting up of the Justice Verma Committee following the tragic rape incident that took place in Delhi in December 2012. The committee released a report on January 23, 2014 putting forward a burning report of general arrangements of criminal lawfulness delivery in reach of an abundantly patrilineal society and advocate that women's equality being elemental to the constitution, its rejection is a disrespect and violation of the constitution. The enactment of the sexual harassment of women at workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013, Sexual Harassment Act in April 2013 is the utmost current step which provides lawful sacrosanctity to the concept of physical integrity as explained in the Verma Committee's Bill of Rights for Women. After the enactment was followed and the Act enforced, Sexual harassment is presently accepted as a, not just a defilement of a woman's fundamental right to equality 
as approved as per Article 14 and 15 of the Indian Constitution and a woman's right to live and of life with self-respect as mentioned in Article 21 of the Constitution but is also observed as a rights violation to run or practice or conduct any business or profession under Article 19 Part 1 G of the Constitution which also mentions a right to live in a safe surroundings devoid from provocation. Summing up this lecture, we learned that with increased presence of women in public sphere, gender sensitization has become very important. Families bring up girls and boys in distinctly different ways which go a long way in socializing them into gendered stereotypes. However, we must be able to introspect critically and question our beliefs that we accept as given. Schools facilitate the correct atmosphere to prepare children against such firm social customs. School curriculums should include gender education so that boys and girls can absorb gender sensitive values. Only then can we build up a progressive society which is unyielding to all forms of gender discriminations and injustice. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. For more details, please read the e-text of this lecture properly and attempt the questions in the end. Thank you.